uh, E5 ex rating exam is today. And so across the Navy, the Navy-wide advancement exam is uh, taking place. Every ship, every shore facility uh, will sit down and they'll take that exam. Uh, and it is our way, and so for the non-Navy uh, folks, it is our way to assess rating competency. It is crucial, as we talk about uh, frequently, uh, that everyone is a professional MC, a professional IT or DP or RM, as I have been in my past, uh, and so forth. So. Uh, that rating exam happens today and there's just pressure that goes with it and people are trying to wake up, those non-morning people, people rolling off the night shift and trying to get their head right um, and, and all those things. So there's probably, there's over a hundred chairs uh, set up in the uh, CYP, uh, which is the uh, Child and Youth Programs Facility. So I'm thankful uh, to uh, Captain Abrahamson, uh, Admiral Williamson, and those who support them. That's the base CEO and the region uh, commander uh, for creating an environment that's comfortable. So thankful for those folks who are volunteering to do that. Thankful for the base that provides that environment. And then my encouragement to uh, the listening audience is that when you see them, and uh, the E4s that'll be taking the E5 exam next Thursday, the E3s that'll be taking the E4 exam the following Thursday, just encourage them. Uh, I, I would ask that you don't wish them luck though. I don't want you to luckily make it to the next pay grade. Uh, what I want and I, my most sincere desire is for the preparation that people have been through, the studying that they've done, the A school time that they spent or C school, the time that they spent uh, with on the job training. My sincere hope is that they are allowed to, or that they um, experience a uh, phenomena where their rating exam is a reflection of their preparation. That's my highest desire. Across the board, every pay grade, no matter what. What do you say? Okay, so I've been wrestling with this because usually I would say good luck, but ever since mm. you fleet, I'm like, nah, I can't say good luck. So right. what do you say? Just you got it, or I hope you. No, no, no. Uh, what I, what? It, so that's why you say that because <laughs> it was. It's, it's good luck is such a spontaneous thing it for is. most of us, right? I don't even know what to replace it with. Right. Ah, so my replacement phrase is, I hope it all works out for you. No. Please. You said something about some push-ups and sit-ups. I'm like, who's taking the PRT right now? Is it yeah, not that time? Yeah, there's two selects out there getting it. <laughs> um, so there's, <clears throat> it's eight days until the greatest day of their life, mm -hmm. and they are uh, knocking down the, uh, the 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 physical readiness test uh, on today. And uh, usually it's a time where you'll see some pretty serious gains. Now, you know, people who have some physical uh, limitations, you know, they may not have those. Uh, advances or make the progress that those who do, don't, right? So I, I sponsored a chief one year who had just broken his back in Ooh. this really peculiar environment. So he had this brace on, so on and so forth. So he couldn't do anything. Drove him crazy because he was a fitness person. Um, uh, another sailor that was uh, under my hand had you know, a bad knee or whatever the case may be. So she couldn't do a whole bunch of running. But the people who, uh, who are fit, fit to fight and healthy, they usually make staggering gains. And it's usually language like, I haven't been this thin since I was you know, this age, or I haven't run this fast since I was this, or whatever. And then our responsibility uh, in the mentorship piece is to keep them going. Right. So it's, it's fun time. I know it's uh, it's on its way. The PRT is oh, 10, 10 weeks. Is yeah. that what I'm reading? 10 weeks? 10 weeks away. And, do uh, it. so and it's every... like the worst time. This it's is like, man, this is holiday season when everybody's trying to eat. How dare they? But okay? we're coming out of the summer. So people got those summer bodies. Okay. And so, you know, you had to work to get there. Let's maintain it a little longer. And then you have the option in the spring. So you knock down an excellent or an outstanding. And we've talked about it before. The rule change where if you perform well on the rating exam, uh, the rating exam, um, I still got the rating exam yeah. on the brain. If you perform well on the rating exam, you have to you can you get to wait two years before you have to take another one. Um, but if you perform well on the PRT, similarly, you you could waive you know the next the the the, the spring cycle you know if you want to. So everybody who is uh, thinking about and preparing for uh, the PRT, same as you and me are. Right. Uh, my encouragement is prepare now, go hard, get a high score, uh, and then you make a decision in the springtime whether or not you want to do the next one or not. And interestingly, I just heard from uh, Mick Pond Smith probably two months ago, he was telling uh, the rest of the fleets that we had an increase of sailors who were getting excellent and outstanding oh, yeah. to 11%. So we increased whatever the number was before, it went up 11% because folks want the options. So oh, yeah. let's get it, let's be one of them. I bring double the force um, when it comes down to 
um, aircraft that we can launch and recover when it comes down to bombs, by the way, because it's important, you know, warheads and foreheads, that's something that we do. Um, and the guided missile destroyers and cruisers and the other assets that uh, accompany the aircraft carrier. So in the event there is a, a large scale event, we're fit to fight and prepared to go. Um, so what's super exciting, I didn't think about this till this very moment, is that those are two of my ships, my last, those are my last two aircraft carriers. So I was a CMC on Truman, of course, um, but I was also in a CVIC, that's a, the carrier information, uh, the in, uh, Intel Center uh, on Lincoln, interestingly. And I wasn't going to talk about McPon because, you know, I, that's my dude and I feel like I talk, that's my shipmate and I feel like I talk to him, <laughs> I talk about him too much. Uh, but he and I were together uh, on 72. So 75 and 72 are out there operating off the coast uh, of uh, our east, uh, the eastern seaboard um, in a way that will uh, uh, bring forth, you know, that, that blue line of effort, right. bring forth that um, maritime presence. So it's exciting. I mean, that's a little bit intimidating too. If you got two carriers, <laughs> yeah, going toward. Ooh, it's a yeah, little, it's yeah. Scary. If, you know, it's one thing I was talking to. Uh, you know, I was uh, talking to somebody about that movie, uh, Lion King, uh, and the cub at the time. You know, Simba is you know rah, 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 <laughs> right, and it's the dad Mufasa maybe. Um, you know, kind of walks up behind him and just kind of looks at everybody and the hyenas and whatever just kind of take off roaring, you know, and the little lion cub is like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it's one thing, you know, when um, one carrier shows up, that's impact and influence and you, people are normally like, oh man. But then you bring two aircraft carriers and then very frankly, you bring in DDGs that are the ones who are really bringing harm. <laughs> Nobody wants to fool around with that. And so we should... Um, those of us who are in support of combat ops, um, we should realize that we are uh, ready to go uh, and that we're fully capable. And so rating competency, uh, I need to say it more because I want other people to say it as well. Every rating leads to lethality. Every rating, no matter what we do, it all leads, Every, no matter your profession, it all leads to lethality. Uh, and so we have to exercise, practice, rehearse, train, and then be ready. I mean, especially on ships, you got to know what you're doing. For them. sure, for um, sure. But uh, speaking of carriers, so we're talking Stingray carrier. Um, oh, yeah, the, the drone. Right, right, right. right, that's crazy yeah. to me. So the, the Stingray, so Boeing just very recently uh, was selected to build, uh, it's actually the uh, MQ-25 Alpha, I think, um, Stingray. And... Again, it is important that we use technology. It is important that we logically uh, do things that we're going to advance us and prepare us uh, to be even more lethal. So uh, Boeing got the contract. They're going to build the aircraft. Now, uh, on board uh, Harry S. Truman, we did a test with uh, one of the first unmanned drones. Uh, it was operated out of, uh, I think the folks were in Dahlgren, or they were somewhere somewhere off outside of Norfolk. We, we uh, brought the drone on board the ship got underway and they were steering it around the flight deck putting it on uh, the catapult taking it back to uh, the aft end of the ship and moving it around successfully um, not long after that I think it was George Herbert Walker Bush uh, who took that very same drone out launched it and recovered it again operated outside of uh, the ship and so that technology is important and we've been using it to uh, we've been flying drones over in the uh, combat zone for years and years, uh, and there's there's a group of people you know who get up in the morning, stretch and yawn, go to work in Vegas, and fly drones around and execute that mission, and then go back home. Uh, and so it is just logical that we take that same capability, that same technology, and whether the drone is operated out of uh, a place that has perhaps more uh, technical capabilities than a ship, because the ship is still limited. You know, it's right. only um, about the size of uh, it's only about the size of the Empire State Building. So <laughs> we still, it's just only. If, if, I, if I pluck up the Empire State Building and lay it in the water next to you know one of our aircraft carriers, about the same. Uh, length, but I me, mean, what's a hundred feet between friends, right? right. So, uh, but if, if I take a uh, organization that uh, flies those drones out of uh, someplace else, um, they just have more assets, more resources, and so it's just logical to do it that way. Or if we have them operated right off of the aircraft carrier, because there are fantastic uh, combat operation systems there, uh, and people who are capable on board the ship as well, uh, so we can do it that way. It just gives us a, a lot more opportunity uh, to just be better. 
and to be part of uh, what we call the Eurasian Partnership uh, Senior Listed uh, Symposium. And what we do is we, we all come in together and we talk on uh, perspectives on um, how to you know, continue to make our navies strong. And it's super interesting. I mean, I think it's really cool considering we're having dual carrier offs. We got yeah. a, a little drone sh like this is, yeah. it, you know, so I mean, I, I feel like, you know, Navy's doing pretty good and to share are. that information and uh, get our partners, like let them know what's. Sure. What's, it, it, what's, what's neat about it, the, the most um, interesting thing and, and surprising, I will admit, surprising thing is how much I learned you know, from them. So I, I, every now and then I'm, you know, we're America, we're doing yeah. this, we're leading the way, best on earth. And we've got cliches like, you know, the world's finest Navy. I mean, we are, um, but we can always be better. And so uh, I am um, invigorated by the thought of those leaders coming in uh, and having conversation with them uh, about how they're doing it. How do they motivate? Because some of these countries still have um, you know, compelled service. So you must serve if you're within this age band. Uh, right. And you must do at least a year, perhaps even two years. And how do you take those feet, those, uh, those folks, you know, who you require to join and then turn them into careerists? You know, those are interesting conversations to me. And, and then when they do leadership symposiums, sometimes we get invited to go uh, and speak and be a part of that. And it's not just Navy. So uh, the uh, Phil, um, uh, the, the, the USAFE folks, they do the same thing. The, the Air Force, they talk to their uh, partners and friends and they do a high amount of training and sharing with them. Uh, even down on the continent, same thing um, with uh, the uh, the Army. Uh, they do the same thing. Uh, Mar 4 Europe, Mar 4 Af, uh, the Marine Forces of Europe and Africa. They also go out, teach and train, go out in the field with them, show them different exercises. So. Right, right. And you know, um, it's I think it's really interesting that uh, you're one of the highest enlisted, or one, you know, I say one of the. And uh, you sit a lot with admirals too. I think it's really cool that you get to have a voice in that sort of uh, area, of, like that dynamic. I ain't being heard, you know, but that's okay. You got it. You are being it. heard. I'm saying what you say. <laughs> but uh, speaking of our senior leaders, so we have a three star and four star. Type of right. So there's conferences uh, periodically or symposiums periodically mm -hmm. uh, that we go to and we do the same thing. So um, there's just a, sharing that knowledge, basically. Correct. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you just don't realize what other people are doing. You know, right. I, I, I can only imagine. I was talking with Amber Franchetti the other day and she was uh, talking about a brief that she had given when she was back in the States and how people were like, huh, really? I didn't realize all that was going on. I'm like, what? It's our life. I mean, it's what we do. But there are some decision makers who are surprised by all of the activity that's going on here. And so uh, it's important, even though, I mean, there's, there's four fleet match chiefs. I think there's eight four-star admirals, but it's not a competition uh, with regard to exclusivity. But so there, there are, um, those admirals come together the same as the senior enlisted come together. And we have, you know, have real conversations about, okay, here's what we're doing, here's what's going on. Uh, and then the CNO is, he's like the visioneer. He's like the, you know, the, the person who is standing out front, you know, pointing to the horizon and saying, hey, this is the way that we should go. Um, and he's not doing it alone. Uh, so he has the support from those three star, four stars, support from the um, some of the gray beards, what they call them, those advisors who have served in high positions and but are now retired. Uh, they come out and they uh, participate in uh, those events. And so, as a, as a matter of fact, I've got this uh, this book, uh, Legacy, by James Kerr. I've uh, been knocking knocking this thing. That's a fantastic book. <laughs> uh, but this book um, is written by James Kerr. And it talks about teamwork. And so there's a uh, sports team called the uh, All Blacks. Uh, it's a, a rugby team in New Zealand, winning his team in the history of sports. And he came, James Kerr came and spoke to us, uh, not just about the book, but about leadership and the things that he had discovered in his research. And so when I'm talking about getting together and talking about it uh, and uh, having conversations at a high level, Imagine having the author of this book who talked about the value of teamwork and, you know, wrote that out and then, you know, pointed out 
you know, to the horizon and said, here are things that we should consider. And then we, you know, the, the folks who attend that event, um, give our perspective on it. And then we come back and we live it out. So my best friend, you know, in high school, the one who I knew the longest, you know, through high school, his name is Bernard Rome. He wore number 56. Um, he's a linebacker and he's like real good. Uh, I wore number 54. I played cornerback when they let me in the game and I was a kicker, right? 56 and 44. So I had the opportunity uh, to be the, uh, the, uh, the Navy representative for CNO on the Armed Forces Inauguration Committee for the 56th inauguration for President number 44. Oh, Obama. that's cool. Right. That Craziness. is really cool. All roads lead to football. <laughs> <laughs> As always. And wanted to give a huge shout out, uh, not this weekend, but the following should be our Wildcats first right. game. That is for, on, on their home, for real home, home field at the high school. I'm super hyped. I'm, I'm really excited. I am excited. too. I'm, I miss going to games for like yeah. high school games for my brothers. I was, I was in the stands, man, right. yelling. Right. Right, hey, right. Listen, I did not play. <laughs> None of us played. But uh, uh, super exciting. If y'all want to come out, definitely check out the Naples Child and Youth Program's Facebook page. Get the game info. But uh, it's their first game on right. the new field. Uh, right. They got it's it's pretty awesome. I'm excited for them. Sometimes we don't we don't realize all the work that goes into making the magic happen. Right. You know, um, so the the work. I mean, personally. Uh, Admiral Williamson uh, and Captain Abramson had to do to get the field because there was some uh, material underneath the surface of the football field that they had to get uprooted so they dug all that stuff up laid down uh, sod watered it you know in a very aggressive way fertilizer so forth so the field is pristine <clears throat> um, but those relationships it takes to to influence um, Marabella and the rest of those folks who make those things happen was kind of a big deal. But, you know, speaking of football, um, it's, it is, uh, as we make our way into the season, and it's really not just a football thing, it's really, it's so, socially, we're in a tough place uh, as Americans right now with regard to relationships. Uh, it appears to me to be very acceptable, you know, just to be flat out openly discriminatory. Uh, and that is... That's repulsive to me uh, because I've had to suffer and live through that um, over and over again, even today. Um, but as we talked about technology earlier, we talked about social media and the influence of it, uh, I encourage everyone to uh, manage your social, social media hygiene with intention. Uh, intentionally uh, realize that when you post something on social media, uh, it could turn into, you know, something upside down. And whether it is a, um, a comment, you know, on the ethnicity of a fellow uh, soldier, sailor, marine, uh, active duty member, or whether it is a, uh, a, a remark about uh, Nike's, you know, bringing on Colin Kaepernick, you know, as the uh, uh, spokesperson or as the, um, the face of the 30-year <clears throat> uh, celebration of that motto, um, uh, just do it, you know, who, those things, we, we must be very, very conscious uh, and careful about those things. Because I mean, you still represent the Navy at the end of the day, so you have matter. to, yes. you really have to uh, watch that because, I mean, there has been instances where someone's taken it, this, this sailor, this Marine, or this Army person said this, right. but they're supposed to. It's right. like that one back in the day when they first took the knee and well, that one sailor didn't, she went, <laughs> yes. That, yeah. that whole debacle, like, yeah. this, we, you have to keep in mind that people look at you when you're in uniform, right. and you have to be very careful of how you represent yourself online because of that. Right, and and, and, and I'd say you have to be very intentional and, about yes, it. Yes. You know, so I'm, I'm gonna post things that are interesting to me, um, because I think it's important that uh, people realize I'm just a person, you know, who happens to be in a, you know, in a influential position. Um, but if I'm interested in the fact that, uh, you know, uh, something may be controversial, like 
you know, the uh, tennis pro said, hey, no more of that cat suit. And so, you know, Serena uh, Williams wears a tutu and, by the way, wins, you know, that you know, tennis tournament. I'm like, ah, that's interesting to me. Right. Look how we are still, we, look how people are still able to overcome challenge and adversity. So, uh, to me, that is a, uh, that's a big deal. And speaking of challenge and adversity, yeah, one thing I'll say is we got, you know, I'm getting the uh, one minute yeah, indication, uh, <laughs> is that to the chief selects, uh, who are making their way through the process, <clears throat> um, make your way through this challenge uh, and adversity. Make your way uh, with a high measure of dignity and pride uh, in the fact that you're going to uh, attain uh, this rank, attain this hat, and then wear it with honor. You know, a great friend of mine, uh, a, a fellow selectee at the time, and a person I consider to be a friend, Eric Faulkner, um, was instrumental in helping me make my way through the process so all of the ch chief selects who are you know fighting struggling and winning by the way uh, through this process finish the fight there's about eight days left nine days um, before the actual final events and the ceremony takes place uh, let's finish and finish strong and always remember the do is on you 